In this video, we're going to be going over uh, setting up your Mac for developers. Now, in my last video, I went over setting up a new Mac in general, which went over mainly system preferences and a, a few apps that uh, you might want to install. In this screencast, I'm going to be showing you uh, more from a developer standpoint <clears throat> how to which apps to install and, and how to manage the configuration. Now specifically, we're going to start by talking about dot .files. Now most developers know dot .files are typically where configuration is put. You know, when you, when you move to a new computer, you're typically going to install programs, and then typically you've got to manually configure each of those programs. Well, <clears throat> you know, that can be a pain. So uh, one, it, basically one way to handle that was to uh, check those configurations into source control. Now, the first way to do that was people would uh, basically create a, a working, create a repo with a working directory where they would uh, create all a bunch of config files. And then where the config files were supposed to live, they would create a symlink which would point to their repo. Uh, so wherever this, the, the, the config used to be, the, in, in its place would be a symlink pointing to a git repo, a local repo on their machine, where they would uh, track you know, all their configurations. Now, um, <clears throat> you can see here, you know, I I've got configs for things like Android Studio, some, looks like some Dart stuff, some Docker stuff, some Expo stuff, GitHub, Vim, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of configs. And in this case, these are all in one place, but they're not always in the, the user's home directory. And so um, what another developer, or I guess he's a developer, this guy, uh, Nicola, what he did was he decided rather than keeping a working directory of a bunch of config files, why don't I just leave the config files wherever they're at and uh, create a repo, a bare repo, that's, that's a repo without a working directory. So what he does is he creates this bare directory, a uh, bare repo, uh, so he's got no working directory. So he doesn't need to use any sim links. He's going to uh, configure Git to always do everything from his home directory. And wherever the other file happens to be, it itself will be checked into uh, source control, um, more rather the path to that file. So in this way, he doesn't need to keep sim links and it's just a, a cleaner, flatter design uh, in that he has no working directory. So you can read a little more about that here in this link. Um, one technique exception. Let me, you know what? I'll just open that. <clears throat> so here he talks about how it how it works. So certainly I recommend checking that out. But the gist is that it's it's a lot simpler in that he's not you know trying to figure out where files are. He's just keeping the files where they're at. Um, there's a few key things in this setup, and I'll I'll go through those here. So first, he's going to init. Uh, well, another thing is, you know, these are configs. So most people, you know, it, it's config, so it's personal to you. So you as a developer, uh, you're going to want, you know, your configs that are going to look a little different from mine, etc. So to set that up, um, first on your machine, you're going to uh, do this init bare. You're going to create this um, a bare repository, which it's going to put the uh, Git files themselves, uh, the Get program files in a, a directory call. In in this case, I'm using .cfg. Now, normally, as you know, get get configs, get files themselves are not configs, but get files themselves are in the .git directory. So, and we don't want to use .git because we might conflict with the an actual .git. So, we're going to call it. We're going to explicitly call it .config, and here's where we initialize that repo. Next, uh, this is a, a, an important part where we're going to create an alias to the git command. Now, we're going to create an alias because we don't want to, you know, I mean, why do people create aliases? They create aliases because they don't want to type in this long command every time they use the alias. So in this case, we're going to create this alias called config, and what config is going to do is really be, be git, but it's going to take these certain uh, parameters. It's going to take our working tree and our uh, git directory, and you see these two paths here. Um, now, not only are we going to, we're going to want this alias and we're going to go ahead and put it into our um, .z shell uh, config file. So this is 
uh, pretty much your first config that you're, we're going to be looking at. And that's because a couple of years ago, Max, they switched from Bash shell to Z shell. So everybody's got this in their home directory if you're using a Mac, um, at least the last few years. And so we're going to put this alias in that uh, file. Now that file, every time we log into a new session or open a new session, it's going to read that file and kind of set up our session. So that we're going to have this config alias in all of every time we open a new window. Now, as I said, it's when we open a new window. So if we want to keep state, just, you know, keep going in our current window without opening a new one, we want to call this source ZSHRC. And what that's going to do is meaning, you know, read that config right now and, and you know, set those environment variables. Uh, we could either do the source or just open a new window because that's going to automatically, you know, read the configs. Now, this next part is also important in that whenever we do call config, uh, we don't want to track, uh, we don't want to show untracked files. Now, what does that mean? Well, typically, you know, when, you, when you're in your own Git repository, pretty much most of the files in that repo, except for, you know, what's in Git ignore, most of those files are, are what's checked into source control. So, you know, it's, it's a self-contained project in a directory structure. But in this case, we're going to be getting configs from all over the place. And for the most part, most files, most of their sibling files will not be things that we care about. You know, we only care about um, dot files that we want to track in our configure, you know, that we want to track in this repo. So with this command here, we're going to say whenever we're using config, don't, you know, if we do a git status, show me things that I'm actually that I care about, that I'm tracking. Don't show me stuff that I, I haven't said I'm, I'm interested in. So that's what this next command is doing. And uh, now we're actually gonna create our, you know, commit our first file to this, this repo that we created. So config, which, you know, it's really, as we talked about, an alias to git. So it's almost like a git add um, our actual zshrc file. So uh, remember, we don't want to use git, we want to use config because that's going to have all that extra, you know, those extra paths in. So we're going to add um, this zsh uh, resource file as our first, as our first uh, file in our new repo, and then we're going to commit that file. So again, we're not using git, we're using config. So it's going to be config, commit, and then with the message, this is the initial commit of the z shell config. So there you go, you've got it done. Um, you've got your first file in source control and you maybe want to, you know, it, it's, you can keep it locally, but for the most part, you want to have this remote in some remote place, because if you do end up setting up a new computer, you can, uh, just clone that to your local drive. And I'm going to show you cloning in a second, local computer that is. Now, another advantage to this is that a lot of people, a lot of developers publish their dot .files online. So you can take a look at, you know, some of these experts, like what's in their dot .file? How do they configure their programs? What programs are they using? So here's some, um, there's a, these guys, um, Mathis and, and Paul Harris. Uh, Mathis is really the main, main guy that was into dot .files and configuration. Um, there's a bunch of other, others. Um, Paul Irish, who came later, and he's got some great utils and so forth in his configs. Um, I referenced a couple other. These here's three basic configs that most people are going to have. Your if you use Vim, you're going to have a VimRC file. Um, here's a Git ignore and a Git config. I personally use, I don't use. Okay, I have two levels of configs. I have my global configs, and then I have my project configs. So in my workspace, I'm going to do you know, configs that are really specific to like node or specific to um, to whatever the project is that I'm working on. And yet I will still have kind of a global, like a bigger um, Git file for things like the operating system, you know, stuff that it's always for me gonna be um, applicable in that I'm using a Mac. So um, that's, that's in my kind of more global like user um, uh, Git ignore. Git config, some basic alias stuff. Um, here we go. Oh, and so if you look in my repo, I also have a few, I have those configs and a few scripts to install programs. So let's, let's look at, now we've just talked about how to, you know, why dot files are important, what they are, um, how to make it work for you, how to, to create your own bare repo. If you, I certainly would recommend um, going through this. Here's some notes to create um, that, that Nicholas set up. 
and I would recommend creating a, a GitHub repo and uploading those files, pushing those files to your newly created repo so you have them for your personal use. Now, let's say you're on a new computer and you've got a repo that you're going to pull from. So this is my repo that I'm going to be using, but uh, you know, you'll put whatever URL there you want. Uh, in my case, I do have some dependencies. Let me see, is this not updated? Let me refresh my page. I did put some dependencies in here. Looking down, da, 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 node, yep, okay. So in my case, I'm gonna be using this command to set up a new machine. So I don't have this machine set up yet. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So I've already committed my uh, a few choice files to a GitHub repo, and now I'm gonna follow these steps. So I'm gonna do a git clone, clone it right into that uh, CFG directory. So again, this is on a new machine. I have nothing set up yet. So here on my right, I'm gonna copy paste that in. So git clone, it's gonna clone into a bare repo. So it's gonna put the git files themselves in that CFG directory. Now, if I do an ls, you see, I really don't have much here. Um, I don't know what that readme is doing now. Let's get rid of that. Um, readme. All right, so as you can see here, I've got eight direct eight files, eight directories, <clears throat> and um, not a lot, not a lot going on here. So I did just do the, um, I just cloned that repo, but I've got nothing here. I've got nothing in my, um, in my, my, my home directory. Well, that's because I haven't pulled the files yet. Well, I've pulled the files into, um, into a, a git or a, the CFG directory. Um, cat. Ls .cfg. So there's the Git files themselves. Now they've got all my all my all my stuff, all my um, paths and whatnot. So now I remember before we need we had in that old machine we did add this um, we added this alias to our config directory. So I'm going to add that again. So my current so which config. I've currently got an alias to get with those two paths in. And with that, I'm gonna check out my current, uh, you know, that repo that I just set up. So do um, config, check out. Bam, all right, so ls, what'd that do? Well, we got some new files here. You know, before we had eight directories, and now we've got a readme here, we've got um, a bash script here, we've got a bash script here, and in fact, if I do an lsal, we've got some other files here. We've got our um, Z um, our resource file for <clears throat> our Z config, Z shell config, our Vim config. We've got a, a bunch of things here. My uh, Git global, I was talking about that. Git ignore global, I was talking about that. Um, in that file, let me just show you that really quick. Um, cat git ignore. <clears throat> God, come on. That's a dot. You see here, this is, like I said, this is kind of my, for my user, um, these are more higher level things like a bunch of OS um, related things, for example. You know, nothing in here, you don't see, um, what is it, uh, node modules or any kind of specific things, but really high level global things, spotlight, trashes, you know, these are more high level, um, high level config for, 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 an, for a Mac um, OS to, to ignore or forget. Um, now, Things like node modules and, and that kind of thing, I put in the project file itself under a dot get ignore because I want other people, if they're going to be working with me on the project, to have the same get ignore. So I don't want to have you know some of it on other parts of my system and and not in the local folder that they're not going to be um, getting when they do a checkout. So now uh, we do that. So in my case, for, for my stuff, I've got a few dependencies here. Let me open a new terminal here. Um, you can see I do an ls before when I was looking at things, you know, you don't see many colors here. You know, I do an ls and they all just black and white. Now I've got colors. So, and my prompt is different. As well, if I vi the readme, for example. Now you see I've got colors here. I've got that theme, that uh, monokai theme. Um, and let me get out of here. All right. <clears throat> so, um, that is my setup. So I hope that's um, useful for you guys. I'm going to be doing one more video, and that's to set up Visual Studio. So I hope you can join me for that one, and I'll catch you then. All right. Bye-bye for now.